of you get a mRNA vaccine, you're gonna grow horns. <laughs> Please get it from me. So no the homes. mRNA vaccine during the COVID pandemic saved a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. It's very safe, it's very effective. Let me first clarify that whatever statements I give mm -hmm. here yeah. are not the position of uh, my employer, which is the Food and Drug Administration. Right. These are my personal views. I'm not giving the position of uh, the federal Thank government. Thank you for making that clear. Africans, we tend to go to the hospital when we are sick. And it shouldn't be like that, especially in the... Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wasani Studios. Today we are having a very important guest, so we're just going to take a few minutes. With, uh, we have a little bit of uh, conversation one-on-one -on -one with my one of my friends. Doctor, please uh, introduce yourself. Yes, thank you for having, having me. My name is uh, Dr. Bernard Marasa. Mm -hmm. I'm training our medical pathologist. Right. I live in the great state of uh, Maryland um, and work for the Food and Drug Administration. Right. And I'm currently a promoter of uh, Migi, MC Migi, right. and uh, Mr. Ngengo, who are touring the U.S. and who are finalizing their tour of U.S. Uh, today. Yeah, speaking of that, today we have a very great event. We had a goosey night, just to make it clear. Uh, it was in uh, New Hampshire. Um, New Hampshire is all the way northeast of uh, uh, United States. It was a very successful event. We had a, a lot of artists, Mr. Ngengo, Migi, and uh, Toto. Uh, so it's been a, it's a been, it's a, it has been a very great event. And we really appreciate that. And so, doctor, please, uh, uh, when you talk about doctor, I just want to know what exactly are you specialized in? Are you a, are you a food and a doctor? Are you, are you a, what kind of doctor were you especially? Can you make it clear for some of us to understand that? Yes, that's a very important question. There are all kinds of doctors. Right. Uh, um, I'm not a medical doctor by mm -hmm. training, but I'm a doctor by um, uh, educational. Uh, I have a master's in uh, molecular biology, mm -hmm. first an undergraduate degree in biochemistry, a master's in molecular biology, yeah. and I did my doctorate, uh, PhD, at University of Maryland in medical pathology. And I currently work for the Food and Drug Administration, reviewing uh, drugs, make sure the drugs are safe to, for human use. So the, speaking about drugs, and um, I just want to know, there's a lot of um, a lot of myth and conception that people are talking about currently. I know of uh, people that are really well, are very close to me, and then their perception about uh, the COVID vaccine is really totally different. So, from the doctor point of view, can you really explain what exactly how important it is? I know people talk about COVID is a long gone thing, but then it's, it's still within. Can you really explain exactly you know how it's it's, it's impacting our current life situations? Yes, it's a good question. First, uh, for clarity purposes, because of the nature of my work, I work for the Food and Drug Administration. Let me first clarify that whatever statements I give mm -hmm. here yeah. are not the position of uh, my employer, which is the Food and Drug Administration. Right. These are my personal views. I'm not giving the position of uh, the federal Thank government. Thank you for making that clear. Or the Food mm -hmm. and uh, Drug Administration. This is uh, an informational session. We are yeah. having a conversation yeah. for your audience and mm -hmm. for you know just informational purposes right it's a very good question yeah uh, so the covid uh, pandemic mm -hmm. uh, which ravaged the country and mm -hmm. shut down uh, the economies and still yep. the, the, the world is still trying almost to three years yes for almost three years mm -hmm. there are some economies that are still ravaged and they are still trying to come out of it yeah but uh, because of the good work of scientists mm -hmm. uh, coming up uh, with uh, vaccines, rapid vaccines, like the, the vaccine that really helped, the mRNA vaccines that mm -hmm. were developed very, very quickly using that mRNA platform, yep. were very, very helpful because they saved a lot of lives because they were generated rather quickly because of the nature of the platform. Yeah. And they were able to get from uh, what we call from the bench to the bedside so you are able to help uh, a lot of people so you mean you are supporting those people i know for sure there's a lot of people who are not, who are not into that but then you you kind of encouraging them to go get a vaccine is that what you're saying yes all the time there is this myth that the covid vaccine is not good or it's going to harm you mm -hmm. take it from me uh, we are trained to make sure that the drugs or the vaccines that get to people are mm -hmm. tested yeah they are you know stringent measures that we have to look at to make sure that we have a vaccine that is post because this whenever there's a pandemic there's something yes. called um, mm -hmm. uh, you know authorization 
uh, emergency authorization, which is the one which is uh, mandated by the federal government to allow uh, medicine or vaccines to be produced uh, rather quickly and to be brought to the people so that they can save the situation like during a pandemic. So when a company develops the, the, the vaccine and it shows a promise that is curing the disease, then it's given what we call uh, 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 authorization, an emergency authorization for it to be used. Yep. Meanwhile, the effects and uh, other things are being studied, but at least to save lives, the government thinks it's better yeah. for that drug to get to the people rather quickly. That's right. Yes. So, doctor, let me ask one thing. There's some, you know, um, most people, especially, let me talk about uh, those people who have been brought up in an African culture, mm -hmm. they kind of be like, you know, uh, they don't want to do their annual testing, you know, physical testing. So, people usually they get into a problem when the problem is already at the at the end stage. Yes. So what do you think about, what can you tell somebody who usually don't do their uh, annual physical checkup? Do people who feel something is going on, something Thank is wrong, you. but they don't want to yes. act on it. Thank you for that very, very important question. Especially as Africans, we tend to go to the hospital when we are sick. And it shouldn't be like that, especially in the Western world. Yeah. Uh, you know, the health care is very advanced. The even mm -hmm. diagnostic tools are very advanced. It's always advice actually in the in the western world they are called uh, annual f annual checkups yeah that's physical right. checkups mm -hmm. that a disease can be identified very early in an early stage mm -hmm. even treatment or but intervention stages get easier yeah even uh, the prognosis uh, when it comes to the disease yeah. gets better than when you go when the disease is in advanced stages a very good example that i know affects a lot of african is uh, uh, colon cancer. Colon cancer, if mm -hmm. you go for screening early on and uh, it's picked early when they're just polyps developing, yeah. they can be excised and you're given a clean life. So how could you know that something is wrong with you But on, on the first stage? Because usually, usually people, they don't know that something is wrong with them. Or I, I can't tell something you is wrong tell. with them. That's why you need to go for a physical checkup. When you do a physical checkup, so, yeah. and if there so is a medical physical history, checkup do? physical checkup, you just go through, so the doctors have a panel of tests they need to do for physical checkup yeah. to make sure you're okay. They look at your heart. They look at your blood work. Blood mm -hmm. work, they look at all kinds of indicators for all kinds of diseases. Yeah. Look at your cholesterol level. Mm -hmm. They look at your arteries. If there is any clogging or anything, indicator, they think that will be flowing in the blood yeah. that can show that, hey, this guy, the... Is having blood pressure, maybe some arteries are clogged up. Yeah. Those things can be picked up very early during the uh, annual checkups, and it's very, very important. They save lives. Yep. You don't want to go to the hospital when you're very sick, when exactly. the, the interventions can't yeah, help. Yeah, just so you know, guys, you know, if you feel something, just go seek the medical advice from a, a professional doctor. Yes. And then, so um, I have a very kind of something I, I want to ask you really quick about the people who usually they don't want to act on uh, on their foods. I don't know, maybe. You talked about, you know, this is just a conversation. So I want to know about the foods and, you know, we have uh, GMOs, non-GMOs and food that are really... So what is your, what's your take as a doctor? What do you think about the food, especially people, the food that people usually take in the United States? You know, that's, that's just a conversation. It's not about uh, more about of, uh, the company that you're working with, but yeah. it's your, your, your intake. My intake is uh, people have to watch what they eat. Uh, there's a, an axiom that says you are, you are who... Mm -hmm. You are what you eat. Right. If you eat uh, junk food, mm -hmm. in quotes, yeah. then you're going to get fat and get sick and have all these kind of problems. If you eat healthy food, you know, vegetables, fruits, drink lots of water, yep. exercise. I mean, those are things that are scientifically proven to be beneficial. And foods like us from the African culture... We eat mainly organic food, uh, managos. Yeah, and exactly. And I know those most are of them are in Minnesota. And, and now places. with the, the you know the migration to the U.S. of a lot of pe our people, they're mm -hmm. even growing those those vegetables here, and we are right. able to access them. Mm -hmm. We will encourage them to eat culturally appropriate food. Good. It's healthy. It's 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 it's, it's good. It nourishes your body. And you don't eat a lot of junk that eventually down the line brings you a lot of problems. Fatty foods and over-processed foods and stuff like that. Exactly. Are very beneficial. So uh, we talk about uh, your pathologies. You no, know, pathology is more about, um, is it like bacteria thing? What is, what is that about? <laughs> no. Pathology, <laughs> it's a disease, the disease, the end stage. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Doctor, so uh, to, to finish it up, uh, we're trying to make a short and sweet for tonight. Uh, doctor, you can let us know where exactly where you're from, where um, 
in the journey of becoming a doctor that will be our, for our, our next episode we sure. will have to explain you know let people know how to become a doctor just like you you have made it up and uh, you're gonna impact a lot of lives so uh, in summary, just give us where you're from, where you're based in, yes. and uh, so that a lot of people will just gonna know where you are. Yes, I'm born in uh, uh, Kisi County, mm -hmm. a place called uh, Suneka, mm -hmm. that's in Bonchari constituency. Right. I did my undergraduate studies at Jomo Kenyatta University. I mm -hmm. majored in biochemistry. Mm -hmm. I worked a little bit at the Institute of uh, Livestock Research, Ilri in Kenya for about a year mm -hmm. and then I got a scholarship to study uh, a master's program in molecular science mm -hmm. in Belgium, Brussels. Good. Then I proceeded to the US to do my PhD in uh, medical pathology. Thank you so much doctor. Uh, and next I'm currently based in Maryland. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, next time we will have to explain to people exactly how everything is going on and thank you. Thank you. Welcome to my show. Thank you, so, really much. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, yes.